Matt Lewis, you're one of the keenest observers of the Republican Party. I want to get your take there on how abortion is playing out um, with the backdrop of this effort in the states. But as we've been discussing, it, it, it's so out of step with where the American public is writ large. Is just is this just going to doom Republicans at, at the ballot box in national elections in 2024 and going forward? So uh, this is one of those cases where I have my conservative hat and my political analyst hat, and they're a little bit different. I am pro-life, and I actually would push back a little bit on the conversation today, which is to say, um, I do believe that there is a ton of weirdness happening in the Republican Party, obviously. Like, the American right today is decadent and depraved. I do believe that the pro-life cause... um, There are a lot of honorable people out there, good, decent people who care deeply about the life of the unborn. And they want to have a culture of life. And I believe that this should be something that transcends just the unborn. It should be part of that, but also compassion for all sorts of people. You know, the the immigrant, the the uh, the widow. Um, How about people who don't want to be shot when they open or knock on a door? Uh, All of these things are part of a culture of life. And so I think that there are people who are legitimate conservatives who are willing to lose elections uh, if it means that they've accomplished this goal that, frankly, took us 50 years to get to. And I think there's something noble in that. Um, Having said that, from a political standpoint, this is incredibly dangerous right now for the Republican Party for a couple reasons. One, I think there's just a predicted backlash that is going to come. You know, sometimes in politics, winning is losing, losing is winning. Uh-huh. Uh, for a long time, I think the pro-life forces had the, the advantage politically, right? Because we felt like we lost in 1973. We felt like Roe was uh, not a good decision. Um, and I, I think that that gave the pro-life side the energy Uh, and the ground troops, quite frankly. And now that has changed. So I think the energy is on the other side. The other problem, I I think, is that because the Republican Party and the right has become so deranged and weird, just plain weird, that it's hard to, uh, it's really conflated these messages, right? And so um, it's hard to be a pro-life conservative in a party with Donald Trump, who has sex with porn stars and pays off porn stars, and with Herschel Walker, who, uh, you know, fathered all all of these uh, out-of-wedlock children. And then you have someone like Ron DeSantis. And again, now now I'll put my political consultant, you know, political uh, hat on. The 15-week ban that Florida had was, uh, most pro-lifers would have applauded that a few years ago. That would have been seen as a big win, a 15-week ban. And I think that that was probably a mainstream position that would have been very politically popular or at least defensible. Moving to six weeks, forget what I said about about my principles. From a Machiavellian political standpoint, uh, I I think that what is going to happen is if Donald Trump is the Republican nominee, the Democrats will destroy him because, A, he's Donald Trump. B, he's a threat to liberal democracy. And now, if Ron DeSantis manages to become the nominee, it's going to be all about abortion, and they're going to have a pretty good yeah. argument against them. Yeah, and, and Matt, let me just say, we all know, I think we, we, we all uh, here, I don't want to speak for anybody, but most of the people I know that are engaged in politics know people who are pro-life, uh, who are pro-life uh, because they do believe in their heart uh, that life begins at conception, or they believe that, uh, that, that uh, protection should come in at some point. Uh, and you are right. You look at most polls, most Americans support a 15 week uh, a limit and a 15 week ban and then exceptions after that. If you just look at the polling, it, it, we, uh, the American people's feelings on this track with with Europe, where Europe, most of Europe is on on abortion. But you would have to agree with me, I, I, I would assume uh, like uh, like. Uh, my pro-life relatives that I spoke with over Easter, that especially the women who were just horrified, horrified by the extremist position state legislatures were taking that would make 10-year-old girls flee Ohio, that would make women uh, at at a great health risk 
carry fetuses that are no longer viable to term, that they would be like in severe du- du- duress and be sent out of an emergency room. And, and, and I, I so no one is doubting uh, the fact that people of uh, uh, people of good faith are pro-life. But it's been taken to such an extreme that they've lost the middle of America. I mean, well, what do you agree with David French that yeah. the problem is this was ruled by judicial fiat and you have a movement that never won the hearts and minds of Americans, never made the political argument. It was just passed down by judicial fiat. I think that's exactly right, Joe. Um, and I think, you know, part of it is what you just said. It was passed down. Um, I think part of it is, frankly, that the pro-life community spent 50 years trying to overturn Roe, but it's kind of like um, winning the war, but you don't win the peace. We weren't prepared for what happens like after the regime falls. How do we win the peace? How do we win the hearts and minds? Um, And there was very little work done there on building a culture of life and on having a plan forward. You would have thought we had time, but no one was focused on it really. But how do you have time to implement you know, a compassion, a compassionate response that is common sense that could win middle America over. Uh, very little time was done on that. And then the other problem, Joe, is that if Roe had been overturned 20 years ago, let's say when George W. Bush was coming in and compassionate conservatism was the ethos, the mentality of the Republican Party, then maybe it would have looked different. But Roe was overturned at the exact moment when the Republican Party was be, being much more radical, much more mean-spirited, and maybe even especially true at the state level. Uh, and so it was really kind of a perfect storm. And, uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll say I think that there are a lot of pro-life uh, Americans out there who are, uh, you know, compassionate and deeply believe in this cause. But from a political standpoint, uh, it was it is going to be a rough road ahead, uh, politically, certainly. Matt Lewis, thank you for being on this morning. We'll see you again soon.